Arguably, the biggest difference between a website and an app is their approach to user data. On one hand, websites do their best to invade privacy by tracking cookies, serving up remarketing adverts, and watching every move we make. So very few users want to trust them with more data. On the other hand, we pretty much expect apps to store our data. We want them to, and it would be odd if every app launched with a GDPR, can we serve you cookies, notice. So it's no surprise that iOS gives us several ways to read and write user data. And I want to look at two of them here. The first is called user defaults, and it allows us to store small amounts of user data directly attached to our app. There is no specific number attached to small, but you should keep in mind that everything you store in user defaults will automatically be loaded when your app launches. If you store a lot in there, your app launch will slow down. To give you at least an idea, you should aim to store no more than 512 kilobytes in there. User defaults is perfect for storing user settings and other important data. You might track when the user last launched the app, which news story they last read, or other passively collected information. However, there is a catch. It is stringly typed. This is a bit of a joke name, because strongly typed means a type-saved language like Swift, where each constant and variable has a specific type such as int or string. But stringly typed means some code that uses strings in places where they might cause problems. Enough chat, let's look at some code. We'll write a view of the button that shows a tap count and increments that count every time the button's tapped. At state, private var tap count equals zero. Button, tap count, tap count, self tap count, plus equals one. As this is clearly a very important app, we want to save the number of taps the user made. So when they come back to the app in the future, they can pick up where they left off. Well, making that happen only takes two changes. First, we need to write the tap count to user defaults whenever it changes. So we'll add this line of code. User defaults dot standard dot set self dot tap count for key tap. In just that single line of code, you can see three things in action. First, we need to use user defaults.standard. This is the built in instance of user defaults that's attached to our app. But in more advanced apps, you can create your own instances. For example, if you want to share defaults across several app extensions, you might create your own user defaults instance there. Second, there's a single set method that accepts almost any kind of data integers, booleans, strings, and more. And third, we attach a string name to this data. In our case, it's the key tap. This key is case sensitive, just like regular Swift strings, and it's important. We need to use the same key to read the data back out of user defaults. Speaking of reading the data back, rather than start with tap count set to zero, we should instead make it read the value back from user defaults, like this. User defaults dot standard dot integer for key tap. Notice how that uses exactly the same key name, which ensures it reads the same integer value. Go ahead and give the app a try and see what you think. You ought to be able to tap the button a few times, go back to Xcode, run the app again, and see the number exactly where you left it. Now there are two things you can't see in that code, but both matter. First, what happens if we don't have the tap key set? This will be the case the very first time the app is run. But as you just saw, it works fine. If the key can't be found, it just sends back zero. Sometimes having a default value like zero is helpful, but other times it can be confusing. With Booleans, for example, you get back false if Boolean for key can't find the key you asked for. But is that false a value you set yourself, or does it mean there is no value at all? Second, it takes iOS a little time to write your data to permanent storage, to actually save that change to the device. They don't write updates immediately because you might make several back to back. So instead, they wait some time, then write out all the changes at once. How much time is another number we don't know, but a couple of seconds ought to do it. As a result of this, if you tap the button then quickly relaunch the app from Xcode, you'll find your most recent tap wasn't saved. There used to be a way of forcing updates to be written immediately, but at this point it's worthless. Even if the user started the process of terminating your app straight away, your default data would still get written out, so nothing will be lost in real life.